Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, today we are going to uh, finish the perforating and chapter and we'll start the formation damage chapter. Uh, from the previous lecture, we learned uh, retrievable and expendable gun types. What are the advantages and disadvantages of each type? Uh, what are they, uh, how they are uh, arranged and constructed before uh, running into a hole? What are the differences in uh, charge construction for uh, retrievable and the <coughs> expendable uh, charge? The charge itself is uh, the same, but the arrangement in the uh, in the gun system are different because of uh, carrier uh, type. Then we talked about uh, perforation techniques uh, depending on the pressure in the well bore during and after the perforation. We learned uh, under underbalanced perforating, dynamic underbalanced perforating, overbalanced perforating, and extreme overbalanced perforating. Uh, we talked about <coughs> some operational considerations and uh, one of the oper uh, operational uh, moment here is the depth correlation because uh, when we do perforation we have to uh, locate our uh, perforator uh, the guns to uh, against the desired uh, zone, desired interval to be perforated. And for that, we use a GR log because the gamma ray log is taken uh, in the uh, open hole during uh, drilling operations uh, for identifying the reservoir, for identifying the lithology, etc. And this GR log uh, is matched with the um, GR log of uh, that we run with the uh, perforator perforator uh, tool, perforating gun. And <clears throat> also we use CCL or uh, uh, casing collar log, which logs the casing collars and uh, as uh, in drilling operations we have already identified the zones for the perforation or the reservoir zone uh, drillers usually put uh, that's the uh, normal uh, practice uh, the locate or install a short casing joint just above the uh, reservoir reservoir part. So the when we run the CCL, we can identify that uh, the uh, casing collars between the uh, in this short casing joint is very close, <clears throat> and that's an indication of uh, the that uh, the, and usually it's located. It's placed on just on the top of the reservoir, so we can uh, identify the reservoir depths that we need to perforate, and we stop the um, perforation tool just against the uh, desired interval. Okay, uh, we can use also natron logs. Uh, for why we use natron logs again? Uh, in um, when we run casing, 
we may use some uh, radioactive PIP in the uh, casing, and that PIP also is located above the reservoir. And this uh, neutron lock will uh, react response on this PIP, and this PIP will also indicate the uh, location of the uh, desired interval so we can uh, perforate the correct interval in the world war. Okay, <coughs> so this is how <coughs> uh, we perforate it in sequence. So we perforate this and then when we run, when we have to uh, perforate two intervals, the bottom interval is perforated first to uh, so that the tool can go through, uh, can uh, can be located against the uh, upper interval yeah, easily. Do you have a question? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, <coughs> uh, during the uh, perforation operations, uh, we have to follow strict uh, safety procedures because as you, as we talked through uh, all the chapter the perforation guns perforation charge uses uh, explosives primary explosives uh, secondary explosives they are very dangerous uh, the, they are uh, they should be uh, dealt with great care because if they detonate at uh, incorrect place then it might be a very uh, it might cause very uh, tragic uh, con consequences therefore <clears throat> we have to be very careful in uh, carrying uh, in uh, uh, Installing the charts and uh, the uh, into the carriers, installing the uh, running the um, perforating gun into the well bore, especially with the electrical detonation system. Uh, typical safety rules here are radio silence on the rig and adjacent locations because uh, radio uh, waves can. Uh, uh, trigger detonation. No welding, crane operation, or other high current activity. Uh, those are uh, prohibited because, again, uh, the electric uh, impact <coughs> should. Uh, when we are retrieving the guns, uh, that's about the retrieval, retrievable guns. Uh, some charts may be not uh, uh, shot or uh, exploded. Therefore, we need to take uh, great care uh, uh, with the retrieving the gun to the surface because it might uh, fire at the surface or in the world board, somewhere in the world board, and that will cause uh, if it is on the surface, that will cause very uh, high uh, uh, explosion, very uh, dangerous explosion. If it happens in upper part of the uh, well, then uh, this might cause a um, casing destruction, casing uh, damage, uh, tubing damage, and the well may be uh, lost or mere well, the uh, integrity of the world will be uh, damaged. Yes, Ander. 
Hello, and it's a, I have one question. If it's not worked, uh, there is no any explosion. We should left the this equipment, uh, the gun, steam gun, meaning the, this perforation in perforation equipment on the day well. On bottom. the what? No, uh, we bo- don't leave the on, it's on the bottom unless it is uh, keeping conveyed or expandable. If it is run on the wire line, it should be retrieved. retrieved. If it's run on the drill stem test string, it should be uh, retrieved anyway. It, if it is run into the hole with the uh, coil tubing, it should be uh, retrieved. In both cases, it's not worked or worked both cases. Yes, yes, of course, we, we can't leave this on the... Uh, again, uh, the only case when we leave the gun system uh, or perforator in the well is the uh, tubing conveyed gun system. When we attach the, the perforation uh, uh, perforators to the end of the tubing and complete the well permanently. In this case, we have a uh, two options. Either we produce with the attached, uh, after the perforations, we produce the uh, with the attached uh, perforation gun, or there, uh, there is a uh, <coughs> sub at the bottom hole, which will uh, detach the perforating perforating gun from the tubing and it will be dropped into the well bore for that we drill uh, additional uh, well bore uh, to some some uh, uh, zone at the uh, with the length of the gun uh, perforating interval so this gun is dropped into this sump zone and this, uh, the uh, production goes through the tubing normally without any obstruction at the, uh, um, at the uh, town hall. Okay. Okay, thanks, I go. Uh, so we we don't leave the uh, perforating gun, especially if we run it with the uh, wire line, because wire line in any case must be uh, pulled out, or coil tubing must be pulled out, and drill stem test uh, st- string must be pulled out, because we have to complete the world normally with the tubing, with the accessories, uh, packet, etc., etc. So this is uh, not a question. Uh, but the, uh, uh, therefore, uh, there, there should be a very strict safety uh, rules should be followed uh, when we are retrieving the gun to the surface. Okay. Uh, and uh, as it says, safety shutdown systems should be available to isolate the gun in, in case of any uh, uh, misfire or uh, unfired uh, gun, unfired charge. Okay. Now we will talk about the uh, some uh, special perforating gun systems and advanced perforating methods. Uh, one of them are the uh, is the stackable. Uh, gun system, which allows to perforate long zones with wireline uh, conveyed guns. What happens here? We run into the whole anchor, and this anchor uh, will uh, hold the perforating guns as we perfor, uh, uh, and uh, it is uh, then uh, it's pulled the wire line uh, pulled out 
and run with the perforating gun. And these perforating gun can be uh, installed if the reservoirs are on top of each other. It can be installed uh, with the uh, uh, next to each other, like here, or if the, the reservoir is uh, the, uh, in uh, some distance, we have we, we may have some blank uh, pipe section, and then install the another perforation system, and then we perforate the reservoir, and then we detach <coughs> the perforators pull out and then start producing with the anchor uh, left in the wellbone because the anchor is installed below the uh, producing reservoir. Okay. Uh, or we can uh, release the anchor and pull out the anchor as well. Uh, another uh, <coughs> and uh, technology is the uh, pivot gun. What is it about? Uh, so, as we said, when we uh, run a wire line through tubing, we have to, uh, our gun size or charge size is limited by the tubing size. But by uh, um, inventing this pivot gun, when the charge can be uh, larger, but it is a uh, turned uh, kind of uh, installed in a way that it will open up once it goes out of the tubing. So we can achieve centralizing. So a good uh, standoff or clearance with the uh, casing wall. And we can uh, use larger charts for the uh, perforations, okay? So they are uh, arranged in the uh, gun system in the carrier uh, like this. And then uh, once the perforator goes out of the tubing, then it, uh, by the trigger, it opens uh, the guns and it gets this uh, <clears throat> we can per perforate with larger uh, charts and uh, the clearance will be uh, much better. Okay. Uh, it has some disadvantages like uh, operational difficulties, like uh, this might not be opened and then firing this uh, might be very, very uh, dangerous. Uh, if any of these is not open, then uh, the firing this might uh, cause some dangerous condition or consequences. Uh, when uh, if it uh, after uh, opening up and after after firing, uh, pulling out this uh, may also be uh, uh, present some difficulties uh, if there is any uh, large debris. Uh, using dual detonator may, uh, and many parts is also some uh, many uh, many parts mean many debris and uh, a lot of debris and uh, this is also operational uh, concern because uh, either pulling out uh, of the uh, of the boil or the leaving those uh, debris in the well bore are uh, maybe problematic. Uh, another uh, advanced uh, perforating tool uh, technology is frack packing. Frack packing is actually a combination of uh, perforation and uh, gravel pack, internal gravel pack. When uh, we perforate <coughs> Uh, the well with the uh, uh, with the high uh, the uh, pressure in the well bore, so we frack 
the uh, well in, in, in one uh, uh, in the maximum strength uh, orientation and this uh, this will be packed with the gravel and then uh, the that will increase the uh, exposure to the reservoir of the well and uh, it will improve uh, uh, hydrocarbon recovery from low pressure and depleted reservoirs by minimizing its completion skin uh, because the uh, uh, low pressure and depleted reservoirs does not have enough energy to produce to overcome this uh, completion skin, the uh, wellbore skin, and uh, they cannot provide high drawdown, required high drawdown to produce uh, required amount of oil. Therefore, we uh, this will help. Uh, to produce, uh, to increase the hydrocarbon recovery as we can produce with lower drawdown. And this is a uh, kind of a, a cheaper um, method than horizontal, uh, drilling horizontals or horizontal wells or deviated wells, uh, etc. So when we compare frac pack to gravel pack, the the frac pack uh, may results in uh, with zero to uh, positive uh, zero to two uh, skin effect. Uh, in some reports, it might be even uh, negative skin because of uh, the um, increased uh, effective wellbore radius uh, against the uh, gravel pack. Gravel pack will pro, uh, uh, always result in positive skin, and depending on the cases, it might be a very high skin actually. Uh, oriented perforating is about perforating in a direction of uh, maximum horizontal stress. What does it? Uh, what? Uh, what the advantages of this is the uh, we perforate in a direction that is uh, to provide longer penetration, and then. Uh, having uh, applied high uh, uh, pressure, we can uh, do uh, some uh, fracturing and that, uh, that will uh, provide better reservoir exposure to uh, the, uh, that will provide better uh, reservoir exposure and the uh, sub uh, subsequently we will have uh, more production with lower drawdown. It is almost the same as, well, it's not the same, but uh, this is uh, with the frac packing. Uh, in the frac packing, we have a uh, packing. Uh, so the uh, we have a, a sand or gravel pack around the world board. In this case, we just perforate it. And uh, due to the high uh, pressure, we have a uh, uh, fracture. Uh, also, here we have oriented charts which are faced at 180 degrees, so it's uh, opposite, uh, the oriented oppositely. Uh, it's just shown only one charge, but the charts are located uh, in opposite sides, so we perforate in both uh, directions to increase the uh, reservoir exposure. Another one is propellant uh, assisted perforation. Propellant are the explosives that 
deflagrate rather than detonate. It is like a uh, raffle or just a normal gun, military gun. And uh, detonation propagates the shock wave through the explosive. But the deflagration chemically burns the material. Okay, so uh, these are the uh, shape charts with the pro uh, propellant uh, sleeves. The, uh, the deflagration of the propellant generates a volume of high pressure combustion gases that can be utilized to simulate the near well bore region of a reservoir without risk of damaging the formation as it in case the explosive used in the process of uh, perforating the well. Okay, so these are the, these explosives are going when they going into the well bore, they burn actually the, uh, <coughs> with the high pressure combustion gases. They burn the uh, res the, the uh, material and they create uh, minimum damage to the uh, formation rock. And <clears throat> by that we can uh, increase the for, for production capacity of the well, productivity of the well, because we get uh, clean uh, perforating uh, perforation tunnels and uh, the uh, pressure drawdown to this uh, flow through these uh, perforation tunnels will be uh, minimized. Okay, so those are uh, given to you for um, Kind of to get you an uh, information about more advanced uh, technologies that are used in uh, perforations in completion the wells. Uh, there are some additional readings. Actually, the first uh, four books are given to you already. You have these books uh, as a uh, additional reading. And uh, the um, modern sand phase completion practices handbook perforating uh, by the Dennis Baxter and choosing perforation strategies are used also for these uh, lectures. So, uh, and they uh, will be used in exam questions. So please have a look on those uh, materials as well. Uh, they are, they can be easily found on uh, internet, through internet, and you can download it and uh, read it through. When you get those uh, books or papers, do not try to read everything uh, through. Um, <clears throat> always look for a chapter or part which uh, uh, which is dedicated to the topic that you are uh, looking for, in this case for uh, perforations, perforating technologies and techniques. Okay, do you have a question? We have completed the perforation uh, chapter, perforation topic, and if you have a question now, I will be uh, happy to answer. Uh, for the next week, I will, uh, maybe uh, by the end of this week, I will uh, set a quiz in the LMS and send you a message uh, when this uh, quiz is uh, available to you to, uh, to solve or to answer. So please go to this uh, quiz and answer. So uh, this will be counted towards your uh, final mark as well. Okay.
So if there is no questions on this, uh, I would like to start with the formation damage. Can you see the screen? Can you see the uh, slide? Yes. Okay. Sure. <coughs> Thanks. So formation damage. Uh, learning objectives, uh, I think you will. Uh, you can read it through your books. I, I'm not going to stop on this. Um, what is formation damage? Uh, this is. Um, very uh, severe impact uh, in the reduction of oil and gas production because it's uh, um, limiting or reducing the permeability uh, or conductivity uh, in the near world war zone. Uh, formation, formation damage can cause significant decreases in world productivity and uh, yearly lost production, uh, lost of the production due to the formation damage is equivalent to billions of dollars in lost revenue. So you can imagine, you can uh, kind of uh, consider the importance of the uh, impact of the formation damage and the uh, why we need to uh, prevent it or uh, remedy it or minimize it. Okay. <coughs> In generally, uh, the formation damage uh, reduces the permeability of the reservoir rock in near well bore area. It is a one component of the well skin. As you know, well skin, we will talk about that. Uh, skin has a uh, many components, so one of these components is the formation damage. The uh, bad, things, uh, bad thing with the uh, formation damage is that it is, uh, it happens on in the near well bore area. And as we learned in first semester, the the uh, main most uh, pressure loss happens in the very near well bore zone. And if the uh, permeability of this near well bore zone is damaged, then you can imagine how much that will impact the productivity of, of the well because it is the uh, uh, the, the near well bore zone is the, uh, the uh, area, uh, it's the, um, if we consider it as a cylinder, then the uh, area, uh, the area of the cylinder uh, is the uh, inflow kind of pass. And as we decrease, as, as the passes are the reduced, uh, decreased, then uh, the uh, productivity of this um, well will also be uh, reduced substantially. Uh, formation damage starts uh, as the drill bit enters the uh, formation. Shahanaham, you are requesting a control. What do you want to do? I'm sorry, Homer, it was by mistake. Okay. Uh, so, <coughs> sorry. So, what does it mean? It means once we are going into the uh, reservoir part by the drilling operation, so drill bit enters the formation. What happens here is the drilling mud is now open to the 
sorry, the reservoir is open to the uh, drilling mud uh, to be uh, to be invade, invaded, and therefore, and each uh, every drilling mud has a chemical uh, composition uh, components has a uh, some uh, solids to manage the well during the drilling operations, and all those uh, components of course, are not friendly to the formation, to the pore uh, uh, spaces, to the uh, chemical composition of the uh, mineral composition of the rock. And depending on the reservoir, depending on the formation, mineralogy, chemical composition of the uh, rocks, it might uh, cause uh, different uh, uh, types of the uh, damage or different severity of the damage. <coughs> Eventually, uh, uh, although the formation damage has many sources, as I said, from the chemical composition, from uh, solids, from uh, in uh, eventually it causes in uh, through two main factors, uh, port throat blockage, so it is uh, reducing the uh, absolute permeability. Port roads are the uh, channels or the um, kind of uh, flow passes that are connecting pore spaces between the, um, the sand grains or uh, formation grains. Okay. So and this is uh, most the narrow. Uh, places in the pore system, <coughs> as you understand, permeability is a function of the porosity because the, uh, the actually effective porosity, which means the connected porosity, and those connections go through these throat throats, and the throat, if the throat is blocked, then the permeability uh, will be reduced. Another change is <coughs> sorry, wettability and saturation change, and here we get uh, impact on relative permeability because when the wettability changes, then the uh, flow through the porous media is uh, the um, is changed and the, here we uh, we can see the relative permeability change when the water or gas will be moving through the uh, pore uh, space pore throats uh, faster uh, better than the oil uh, oil phase and we will lose in relative permeability so uh, eventually we will lose the uh, desired oil or uh, hydrocarbon gas uh, production. How do we solve this problem? How do we uh, get rid of this problem? Uh, first of all, it is a matrix simulation, which we will discuss in the four, where we can uh, we will learn that we can reduce the formation damage. Uh, effect or prevent it or uh, uh, <coughs> remove uh, totally from the uh, reservoirs or we can uh, remove the effect of uh, formation damage by matrix simulation. <coughs> Sorry. Another way is hydraulic fracturing to bypass the formation damage. When we uh, fracture uh, the um, formation, we get long uh, fractures, about uh, uh, tens or hundred feet uh, into the reservoir, and uh, this is bypassing the formation damage around the well bore, and we get uh, great exposure to the reservoir so we can uh, produce uh, uh, so the formation damage now is bypassed and does not impact the uh, production from the uh, well 
uh, and of course advanced perforation technologies that we mentioned just uh, a few minutes ago, like frack packing, uh, oriented uh, perforations. Um, those are also uh, those also help uh, to um, bypass the formation damage and reduce from the um, original permeability zones of the world well of the reservoir. Sorry. So. Uh, Mechanisms of formation damage, how the formation damage is actually occurs, what happens. So, as I said, solids plugging, it is when the solids from the uh, completion of drilling fluid are plugging the port roads uh, or even port uh, spaces. Uh, clay particles uh, swelling or dispersion when uh, it happens as you know, the clay itself uh, is swelling when it meets with water. When the and clay is getting in contact, it uh, the clay will uh, swell. And uh, this, if the sand, if the reservoir uh, has the clay minerals or shaley uh, reservoir then those clay particles will start swelling as it gets co in contact with the water which is base uh, for many uh, mud uh, uh, drilling mud compositions and by the swelling uh, these will uh, compact or this will uh, re reduce the size of pore space, pore uh, dimensions, pore volumes. Uh, saturation change, uh, of course, again, uh, when we the drill through the reservoir, the uh, some drilling mud is invading into the uh, formation. And as the drilling mud is mainly water based, then this drilling, uh, the, the water will change the saturation around near well bore and uh, the change saturation. So uh, we have a, uh, the pores that were con uh, con containing the uh, oil will now be containing some uh, water and therefore the uh, relative permeability to the uh, oil now will change and we will get less um, pass area or uh, flow area for the particular oil flow. Wettability change again when we uh, use oil uh, based mud uh, uh, and we have a uh, water uh, wet formation. Uh, this mud can change uh, or some chemicals applied in the uh, mud or the compression fluids may change wettability of the formation and changed wettability will also affect the uh, um, relative permeability and uh, the uh, again the flow of the oil through the uh, porous medium will be reduced. Uh, emulsion blockage uh, as a result of uh, uh, increased uh, viscosity, it will again uh, <coughs> block the pore uh, roads. Uh, aqueous filtrate blockage is the same. Uh, uh, it is because of a, uh, a water effect on the formations. Uh, mutual precipitation of soluble uh, salts, uh, both from the uh, uh, drilling or completion fluids and uh, the, from the minerals uh, of the rock. Uh, fine migrations, uh, it might be a, um, due to some uh, uh, production issues. Uh, deposition of paraffins or asphaltins is related to uh, 
lowering pressure in the reservoir. These are the uh, formation damage during the production. The same with the condensate banking when the reservoir pressure uh, is depleted and condensate starts uh, depositing in the near world war area uh, by, uh, so blocking the uh, pores or permeability for the gas again uh, reduced uh, relative permeability and bacterial plugging is uh, also um, when the bacteria uh, start building a uh, uh, columns uh, in the reservoir in the near world war part and uh, uh, they block the um, pore space pore volumes reducing the absolute permeability so <coughs> the form the another uh, description of formation mechanisms of the formation damage can be stated as a block in the face of the formation reduced by the tendency to form emulsions between the oil and the well and the completion brine. So what's that? It is a, uh, when the, uh, as you know, emulsions, or, uh, which is kind of a mechanical composition of water, water and the, uh, the oil is, uh, has a very high viscosity. So uh, high viscosity means <coughs> low flow or mobility uh, capacity. And that is a uh, uh, another uh, mechanism of the uh, formation damage, especially if it is uh, within the uh, uh, near world war zone. Uh, production of inorganic scale in the porous medium uh, because of uh, formation uh, water and completion brine uh, contact. Again, the uh, chemical composition or uh, the, uh, might be different with the formation uh, of the formation water and the completion brine. And so uh, this might be, uh, this might cause some inorganic scale, like just the precipitations into the porous medium. So again, blockage of the uh, porous medium pore, uh, pore uh, volumes and uh, increased uh, bacterial activity. We said that uh, blockage by suspended solids presents in completion and uh, drilling uh, fluids. Increase of uh, water relative permeability. Uh, a rock fluid incompatibility, these all are uh, were stated in previous uh, slide. <coughs> Sorry. This graph you have already seen. This is a uh, damaged zone around the world war. Uh, this is the world war. And uh, um, you can see uh, that the uh, pressure in the reservoir gets very high drawdown. Uh, very high uh, pressure losses in the damaged zone. So if we didn't have this damage, the, uh, this would be like this. But due to the damage, the uh, pressure uh, pressure loss in this area is even uh, much more severe. So we lose this amount of uh, pressure, which directly affects the uh, productivity of the well. Uh, skin, uh, as I said, skin, tot the total skin has a uh, many components. Uh, one of them is the formation damage. Another one is geometry, completion uh, skin and production skin. Let's go through those uh, skin types and uh, complete uh, uh, today uh, lecture. So. The geometry skin is uh, related to the uh, geometry of the well, trajectory of the well. Uh, to, uh, by the geometry, we mean uh, limited entry or partial penetration of off-center uh, well placement. 
what is limited entry uh, or partial penetration is uh, when we have a reservoir and we drill a well not reaching the bottom of the reservoir and this is the uh, partial uh, partial penetration or we can drill through the reservoir and perforate only central or upper part and in that case we will have a uh, again a limited entry off center uh, well placement means uh, if we have a reservoir uh, of some form and if you place the, uh, the well here then this is the off-center well placement and of course this will affect the productivity of the well because of this uh, distance uh, and this will be uh, affecting the uh, well uh, productivity index. Completion uh, skin is related to the perforations, flow convergence, crushed zones or gravel packs installed, uh, natural or hydraulic fractures. So uh, these can be, uh, well, the geometry skin and the completion skin might be uh, both positive and negative. If we have deviated or slanted wells like this, then of course the uh, uh, exposure to the reservoir is increased and therefore we get uh, more uh, productivity and that means we get uh, negative skin or in other words, uh, we get the um, better production than uh, if it would uh, for vertical well. Uh, the same with the completion skin. Of course, the perforations, uh, floor convergence, because if we perforate only this part, uh, well, in any case, uh, we, the, uh, the flow goes horizontally, and if we have uh, if you have only part of this perforated, then flow from bottom and top will have to converge into this uh, perforated area, and that will create more turbulence and uh, the more uh, skin. But if we uh, hydro uh, fracture it hydraulically, or if we have natural uh, fractures in the reservoir, then this will increase the uh, reservoir exposure, uh, or contact area with the reservoir uh, and the um, effective wellbore radius it will be higher, so we may get a negative skin. The production skin, <coughs> uh, skin uh, coming from production is related to non-Darcy effect or turbulence. So I think we talked about it because um, if we have a limited entry and we have uh, very high rates, then uh, the uh, in the entry point to the wellbore in, in perforations or even open hole, the the uh, velocity of those uh, of this flow will be so high that there will be a high turbulence and non-Darcy effect. So due to the friction, due to the uh, traffic jam effect. Okay. Uh, relative permeability effect is related to production is about when we uh, go when we start uh, water uh, breakthrough or when the reservoir pressure depleted and the gas is not uh, starting uh, is, uh, dissolving from the solution and in near well bore zone we have now gas and oil therefore we get uh, relative permeability to oil reduced and uh, if you remember from the IPR uh, discussions that is why the linear IPR, IPR is becoming the uh, ellipsoid IPR and uh, pressure dependent uh, phase behavior again uh, it is gas condensate and that's because of the uh, condensate banking uh, the uh, liquid loading in the wellbore. 
and deformation damage. Okay, that is uh, we will consider more uh, uh, more uh, in details. And deformation damage the only the skin uh, is providing for positive skin, and which can be chemically removed or bypassed by uh, advanced technologies. That's it from me for now. Uh, if you have any questions, I uh, I can answer. Uh, I will be happy to answer. If not, uh, I will see you next week. Continuing on production. Uh, sorry, the formation damage. Uh, some talk about the skin, how we can uh, estimate skin, uh, how the formation damage is evaluated. Um, what is the effect in near world war? Uh, what are the effects on uh, uh, total economics, profitability? Uh, and then we will talk about sources, what are the uh, mechanisms, sources, and how they are uh, actually uh, affecting the uh, productivity. Okay? <coughs> So, questions? May I ask question? Yes, please. Uh, what does it mean uh, for, uh, formation damage is dealt with uh, chemically? Uh, because formation damage in many cases is the uh, due to the chemical composition effect of the uh, between the uh, drilling mud or completion mud, completion of fluid, and therefore uh, this can be uh, removed by the chemical composition, chemical acidizing, that's what matrix simulation does. Uh, we acidize the uh, near well bore zone to remove or to reduce effect of formation damage. So we uh, uh, impact the uh, reservoir part that is damaged, the formation part that is damaged by chemical compositions that will remove this effect or uh, uh, minimize this effect. Um, can't we use uh, fracturing methods? Yes, I mentioned that fracturing will bypass the uh, formation damage area, but it won't remove it. So everything is uh, depending on what is best solution for a particular reservoir, particular well, particular formation, particular damage. Okay, uh, it has to be uh, accounted for uh, uh, financial situation. Uh, the budget, because uh, matrix acidizing is much cheaper than uh, hydraulic fracturing, so it will depend on severity of the uh, damage. It will depend on the uh, uh, radius of the damaged zone. Uh, it's not uh, something that, well, this is the only way to uh, to go, or this is the only way to solve this problem. Uh, therefore, the uh, Choosing any stimulation method uh, should be uh, uh, kind of should be uh, compiled with a very uh, thorough investigation. What is the damage? What is the type of the damage? What is the severity of the damage? What is the radius, radius of the damage? And then to uh, analyze what will be the best option to minimize or remove the damage, or if there is no way to remove the damage, then we will have to think think about how we can uh, uh, bypass the damage. Is it frac packing? Is it uh, uh, horizontal? Uh, sorry, uh, hydraulic uh, fracturing. So that's all. Uh, is it is not. If you come to me tomorrow and say that what, what what should I do with this formation? I have a well and there is a formation damage. 
what should I do? I, I, I will not be able to answer you until uh, you will get uh, answer for me for these questions. OK, so it is it requires uh, thorough uh, investigation before you apply any uh, stimulation method. Thank you, teacher. OK. Any questions? Any more questions? Not so far. OK, so uh, if you have any questions again, you can write me on uh, team space uh, through chat or through the uh, channel through channel. It will be much better because uh, everybody can see it. So the my answer question and my answer will be. Uh, uh, kind of. Uh, seen uh, everybody can see it and can get benefit of this conversation okay have a good day uh, i don't know if you have uh, another class or not probably you do and at three o'clock we have a ftp discussions is there any need for this discussion for today Meet at three and see what happens. Sağ olun. Sağ olun Elhamdülillah. Sağ olun.